Okay, so we're looking at the second day of notes over section 1.4, number 1. So we're looking at example 2 here. So we're trying to find the limits as x approaches 2 from both the negative side and the positive side and the general limit. One way to do that is by graphing. So we're going to start today by finding limits by looking at the graph. And then we're going to make more uh, generalizations and hopefully not have to use a graph. We can use some other uh, algebraic methods. So to graph this function, this is saying to graph y equals x squared. That's a parabola. But we're not going to graph it when x is 2. So I am going to go ahead and plug 2 in here, though. If I plug 2 in, I'm going to get 4. So I'm going to have a hole in the graph at that point. Let's go ahead and make this a negative just so that we can see it better when we graph it. So this is saying that when x is 2, we're going to have the point negative 30. So this is, again, we've got y equals x squared. That's a parabola. At 2, 4, we're going to have this hole in the graph. And then the point that we're actually going to have is the point 2, negative 3. So here's the way the graph looks. So now we're trying to find the limits from, first of all, from the negative side. Here's our general graph. We're looking from the negative side of 2. That means from the less than side of 2. Peter, what's that limit as we get closer and closer to 2 from the left side? 4, yes. Matthew, what about if we find the limit from the right side? What are we approaching? 4 again, yes. And so, Lizzie, what's the general limit going to be then? 4. If the limit from the left and the limit from the right are the same, then the general limit has to be 4. But here is what might be different. G of 2. That's asking us when x is 2, what is y? So that's really asking us where is that closed dot? And so, Avery, where is the closed dot? Right. So this answer is negative 3. So we can see that for this removable discontinuity, look at the way the limits went. We had all these limits. But then the y value was actually something different. Over here, when we had the removable discontinuity, we had all the limits, but then f of 1 was actually undefined. We had no answer for it. So those are the two ways that removable discontinuities can look. So for this one, we would say we have a removable discontinuity at x equals 2. All right, so in the next part, we already did a non-removable discontinuity. Here's one way it can look. So one way it can look is we have these asymptotes. And we've got all this bizarre stuff happening on the limit. These are different, so therefore the limit does not exist. We had an asymptote, so that meant our y value was undefined. So now let's look over here. I always want to plug this number in. So if I plug 2 in, 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6. Here, though, it's saying when x is 2, we get negative 3. But what this is saying is that we've got a parabola for all the x's when x is less than or equal to 2. The parabola's been shifted up two units. So I'm going to go to that point of 2, 6, and I'm going to put a closed dot because we're equal to it. Now, my parabola shouldn't just go down here anywhere. We know that we have, it's been shifted up two units. So the furthest it should go down is right there like that. That's the way that part looks. Now, is this going to be a point, just a point of 2, negative 3, or is it going to be a line? I think it's just a point. But it, it has to be more than just a point because it's saying that we're going to graph y equals negative 3 anytime x is greater than 2. So at 2, I would actually have an open dot at negative 3. But if x is uh, 2.1, 2.2, anything greater than 2, I'm supposed to plot negative 3. See how that's going to end up being a line if I do that? So there's the way the piecewise function looks. So now I want you to be thinking about the limit. Here's the x value of 2. This is saying we're going to approach from the less than side, from the negative side. So right before we get there, 
What are we approaching? Sarah, what do you think? What's that Y value we're approaching? Six is correct. This is saying the limit as we approach two. Here's two. But now we're approaching from the positive side. So over here. Lauren, what are we approaching from over here? Good. So we have a limit of six, a limit of negative three. So what does that mean about the general limit then? Kyle, what's true of the general limit? Correct. And then it asks us for g of two. That's just asking us what is y when x is two. We come up here, we look for that closed dot, and that should be six. So both of those were non-removable discontinuities. And look how different the answers were. But it was kind of the same pattern. The limit from the right and left were different. The general limit did not exist. And then in one case, f of c was undefined. In the other case, it was defined. So it can be one or the other. All right, let's flip over to the back. Okay, now on the back it asks us, is there always a general limit? Do we always get an answer for the general limit? No. For non-removable discontinuities, the limit does not exist. All right, so let's graph this one. So again, to find these limits, we're still focusing on the graphing aspect. But later, we're going to look at it more analytically. So look at this one. This is a triple piecewise function. We have three pieces to the function. We're graphing this piece, but only when x is less than 0. So I'm going to go 0, I plug it in, and I get 1. So I'm going to use that point, open or close that, you guys. Open dot at zero one. Then I have to look at what kind of shape this is. Well, y equals x plus one is just a line with a slope of one. But I don't want to graph the whole line because I'm only graphing the line when x is less than zero. So that's only down here. So there's that part of the graph. Then I'm supposed to graph this, but only between x's of zero and four. So only between this region, between 0 and 4, only in there am I graphing this parabola. And I need to know what the endpoints are of the parabola. So I'm going to plug in 0. 0 squared plus 1 is 1. I'm also going to plug in 4. 4 squared plus 1 is 17. So here's the way this part's going to look then. This point, this dot was open, but now it becomes closed because it's the same answer and it's equal to it. But then I've got to take this all the way up to 417, which is way up there with a closed dot. Now, should I just make this a straight line? Is, it, is this a straight line right here? No, it, that's a problem. So I need to make this a little bit curvy looking. Something like that. Now I'm going to plug 4 in here. 4 minus 2 is 2. So I'm going to have that open dot there at 4, 2. And then I'm going to see what kind of function it is. x minus 2. y equals x minus 2. What is that? It's a line with a slope of 1. I'm going to go up like that. And we don't have to have it perfect. It's just kind of going to help us with these limits. All right, so looking at letter A now. It asks us to find the limit. Here's our C value of 0. So find the limit as, as we approach 0 from the left. So here's 0. We're doing it just slightly to the left. As we come in from the left, what's the Y value we're approaching? Um, what do you think, um, Paige? What did you say? 1 is right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to approach 0 from the right. So here's again, here's the next value of 0. We're approaching it from the right this time. Madison, what is it? 1 again. So whenever these two are the same, then our general limit is 1. 
f of 0 is asking us what's the y value when x is 1? What is it, everybody? 1. If all of these things are the same, so all the limits are the same, in other words, the limit from the left, the limit from the right, the general limit, and the y value, if they're all the same, what's true at that point? Can I graph this without lifting my pen? I just did it, so yeah. Okay, so this is going to be continuous at c equals zero. Okay, now we're looking at a different part of the graph. Now we're looking at when c equals four. So now that's right here, when x equals four or c equals four. So I want you to try to answer these four on your own and then check them with your group and see if you all agree. Okay, Noah, what did you put for letter E? Okay, do we agree with 17? We should, that's correct. Um, what did you put, Natalie, for letter F? Two. So as we come in from the positive side, we're approaching four. Did everybody put two? Yep, that's correct, isn't it? Then we're asked for the general limit. Well, to have a general limit, these two have to match. They don't, so it does not exist. This means when x is 4, what specifically is the y value? So for that, we're looking for the closed dot, and that's going to be up at 17. How'd you do? Did you get them all right? Those people did? Great. Now, just by looking at this, without even looking at the graph, because all this stuff is so different, we know that there would have to be a non-removal discontinuity at x or c equals 4. You can either say c equals 4 or x equals 4. It doesn't really matter. Questions? Okay, at the end here, this is what I meant by a more abstract way of doing it. Instead of graphing, we should be able to just kind of think about the continuity. Do you know what this kind of function looks like? We've run across it several times. Does anyone remember what that looks like? Semicircle, right. So this is just going to look like a semicircle. We don't want to have to get out of our graphing calculator to see that. Now, over the interval from negative 3 to 3, these are x's. From x equals negative 3 to x equals positive 3, is it continuous? Could I trace over it? Yeah, I just did. So yes, I would say it's continuous over negative 3 to 3. Now, look at letter B. We have a line with a slope of 1, y-intercept of 2 and another line with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of negative 3. I want to know if I can graph this whole piecewise function without lifting my pen from x being 0 to x being 4. It's kind of like this one. Right here in this piecewise function, I could trace at 0 just fine, but I couldn't go from here to here. I'd have to lift up so it's not continuous. How can I quickly check this to see if this is continuous between x equals 0 and 4? Any ideas? Guys, if they're both lines, then what would have to be true of the two lines at 1? They would have to have what? The same value at 1, right? 
So if I want to quickly know if this is continuous, I'm going to plug 1 in here. 2 plus 1 is 3. I'm going to plug 1 in here. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So I know I have a line that stops at 1, 3, and then the next line picks up at 1, negative 2. Am I going to be able to scratch that without lifting my pen? No. So I would then say that there's a non-removable discontinuity at x equals 1. Questions on that? All right. Very good. So that's what we're going to be talking about on your homework assignment. You've got some problems in the book on page 76. I want you to take a look at those, and I want you to figure out that continuity and limits.